More information has come out highlighting Ineos's plan ahead of the summer and what positions they plan to address in the transfer market with three key areas being picked out. Who do Ineos like? Who do Ineos want to build around? And where do they want to improve this summer? Is Ten Hag's job safe? Is he in danger after recent results? Are Ineos looking at managers? What is the possibility of that? A few other transfer news stories which i've kind of put in the nonsense category about ross barkley to united and all of that and we'll cover that uh Real Madrid also looking at a few at manchester united players reportedly surprising names and then just some general changes rules and apparently according to romano mason greenwood's exit is looking very likely please do hit that like button please do subscribe down below if you're new let's get right into the video with the transfer news via Mike McGrath of Telegraph saying that Manchester United have been assessing signing a centre forward to support Rasmus Hoyland and are in the market for a right back and the right side of centre back to boost their back line. United could also be in the market for a midfielder depending on Casemiro's future and that backless revamp is to see them target strikers and defenders for the right side. Now, I think, to be honest, the positions that Manchester United will be looking to sign in the summer depends on who they sell. I think, and we know for a fact, that right-sided centre-back and striker are definitely going to be the two priorities going into the summer because Romano confirmed that was the two priorities going into the January window, but we didn't have the funds to do anything. I think Todd Abo would probably be the most likely because Nice, there was something that went wrong with him going to Tottenham, which I think was maybe to do with maybe Nice doing something to save him for United. I think Todd Abo could be one, but I know we're interested in Taps Over. I know we're interested in Eleni Euro. I know we're interested in Antonio Silva, so I'm not going to narrow it down on Todd Abo because Ashworth and Barada might come in and have a different plan and we, we don't know who the next manager is going to be and they could have a different idea of the kind of centre-back they want and also due to his lack of ability in the air. Like, he's decent in the air, but he's very similar to Martinez in the sense of he's better in possession, he's better at defending rather the physical side they might not go for him and then obviously Romano said that United want a striker we want a striker in January wants one to support Hoyland Marshall was leaving um one of Maguire and Lindelof will leave and I'm sure one of Evans and, and Varam will leave so I think we're going to lose two centre-backs on Marshall in the summer so I guarantee you that yeah I think right centre-back and striker will be two areas United will address this summer um it's been made very keen that United value Hoyland highly so it's going to be a support striker but they do like Cirque, they do like Tell because he can play across the front three. United are looking at young players that can play across the front three, and they're looking at more experienced players, I think, to help with Rasmus Hoyland. I think right back might be a maybe a cheaper deal because I think that um Delo is valued really highly, particularly if Tenog stays. But it looks like Wamba Sack will be moved on. So I wouldn't be surprised if a backup right back came in, um, or a right back that came in as good as Delo to challenge Delo. To replace Bam Saka, I don't think it will be Frimpong. He's a very different style of play to the way that we play. Um, but that looks like what United are going to address. And then we know that I think they will sign a midfielder. I think they could possibly sign two midfielders with Ericsson going to leave, Casemiro could leave, Amrabat will leave, and McTominay could leave. I think we'll probably sign two midfielders, depending on outs. And then, of course, right wing. I think United will sign a 6 8 hybrid. I think we'll sign a right winger. I think we'll sign a striker. And I think we'll sign a centre-back. And then potentially another centre-back, potentially a right-back, potentially another midfielder depending on sales, if I'm going to be honest with you. Now, who do Ineos reportedly want to build around? Now, reportedly, Garnacho, Mano, Hoyland, Martinez are seen as the future at United. Uh, Rashford and Bruno Fernandes are also rated very highly at United, but obviously that depends on form. Obviously, Bruno and Rashford haven't been very good this season, particularly Rashford, but they are good players and they have been key for us in the past. And they're very much players that Ineos and we know are capable of good things but I think it's very much can they find that form for now Bruno, Rashford, Shaw, Delo all safe Garnacho, Mano, Hoyle and Martin is all safe I think Garnacho, Mano, Hoyle and Martin is at the fall for the future but to be fair there are reports that Martin might not be 100% safe because of his injury record Delos impressed people. Rashford and Bruno obviously impressed people, but not this season. And then Shaw and Varane, I, I've added that myself. I just think they are good enough for United, but they're old and injury prone. So I think Shaw and Varane, I'd like to be here next season, but eventually moved on in 2025. Uh, Bruno and Rashford, I'd like to be here next season, but if they don't find form, move them on 2025. Maybe, maybe not Bruno, but Rashford. I think Bruno has been a bit bad. I know the last few games Bruno's been bad, but I don't think he's been as awful this season. But Obviously, you know, I'm a big fan of Bruno Fernandes. I'm a big fan of Marcus Rashford. And I think people want them sold now. People want them dropped now. But I think if we took Bruno and Rashford out of our team right now, we'd be 10 times worse because we don't have the depth to replace them. Bruno and Rashford's performances haven't been good enough. But if we drop them, Anthony plays because Tenag will play Anthony in that position. And McTominay will play as 10 and Ericsson will play as 10 and will be worse. And I think that Bruno and Rashford have been better, but I don't think they've been any worse than Lindelof. I don't think they've been any worse than Casemiro. I think they're just two players that get picked on, in my opinion. Maybe that's just my opinion. Like, I don't think Bruno and Rashford have been good enough, 
But I think they're becoming the scapegoats. Oh, so Bruno and Rashford, so Bruno and Rashford. They're the reason we can't play good football. And it's like, no, the reason we can't play good football is the whole team. It's not because of Bruno and Rashford. Because if Bruno and Rashford weren't playing, we'd still be playing bad football. I tell you that for a fact. But the four players to build around are definitely gone at Germano, Hoyland and Martinez, if you can stay fit. They are the future. Um, so, yeah. Now, the problem is who we build around and what we do in the transfer window is going to be dependent on Tenog, Tenog's future, Tenog's safety. And the question is, is Tenog in danger? Because Ineos are keeping an eye on managers. We've been linked to Tuchel, we've been linked to Nagelsmann, we've been linked to Deserve, we've been linked to Potter. We did, Mourinho said he'd take the job, but that's never going to happen. You know, we've been linked to a number of managers, Ruben Amorin of Sporting as well. Now, what we do know is Ineos are aware of the injury issues at United and are aware that Tenog was successful in his first season and they don't plan to sack him or do anything until the end of the season and they'll probably make a decision until the end of the season. There's no chance of an interim coming in. And Ratcliffe mentioned that the environment's the biggest issue. I think Ineos are in the sense of the environment's the biggest issue at the club. We're going to change that. We're going to bring in Dan Ashworth. We're going to bring in Omar Barada. We're going to plan who we're going to sell. And then maybe at the end of the season, Dan Ashworth and Omar Barada will, will make an assess um, if, 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 if Ten Hag's the right man to lead us forward. They may sack him at the end of the season. They may keep him but they're going to change the structure first. We know that Ashworth is a fan of other managers, having other managers having worked well with Potter. I mean, then you know, new ownership often changes managers. I'm going to say this now. I don't think a decision has been made. I don't think any of us are focusing on Tenor right now because they want to get Dan Ashworth in. I think Dan Ashworth, Omar Barada come in. They establish a way they want to play. They assess Tenor. You know, he's had injuries. What did he do last season? They also assess elements of this season and they say, well, we want to play this way. Can Tenor do this if we get rid of XXXXX player and bring in YYYYY player? Then they'll probably make a decision. I think that Tenor is very 50-50. I think from what I've heard and information I've heard, Tenor is almost being trialled as an interim now and this is his audition. Um, to prove can he can he do the job in the long term with Martinez, Hoyland and Shaw being out injured the odds aren't in his favour but with Ratcliffe very aware of the structural issues and there's so much to change at United he might buy he might give Ten Hag another season to buy himself time continuing on into the next segment of the news and I've kind of put this as nonsense news reports I've included it because people are talking about it it's news it's getting discussed on Twitter but I think it's absolute nonsense and that is that Man United are considering a surprise move for Ross Barkley in the summer the interesting thing about this was when he delved more into it they were saying we see Ross Barkley as a Casemiro replacement Ross Barkley is not a Casemiro replacement Ross Barkley is very far from a Casemiro replacement that has to be completely made up. I'm sure we've, we've been impressed with Ross Barkley. He's probably an Ericsson replacement, but I don't think anyone should be going for someone that is ageing. I think they want to go for a new young approach, as good as Barkley has been. It was also said that Real Madrid have started to analyse the prospect of re-signing Varane and re-signing Casemiro from United. Again, it's come from Fichayas, not the best source of information. I don't think there's much credibility in this report. I think Varane and Casemiro, if something happens, they'll go to Saudi. I wouldn't be surprised if Real Madrid looked at Varane, um, but I think Casemiro, if he's going to leave United, will go to Saudi. There's a lot of interest in him from Saudi, and I think he can get more money from Saudi. Um, I think for me... If I had to keep one of Varane and Casemiro, I'd probably keep Varane. And Varane, obviously, he's been injury prone, but he's only missed five games this season through injury. He's a brilliant box defender. I'd personally keep Varane and then sell Casemiro if we're getting good money from Saudi and we have a good replacement lined up. I'm not selling Casemiro for us to not find a replacement and stick McTominay at DM. Not going to happen. Amrabat, Ericsson, Casemiro, McTominay, those four can leave if we bring in two solid midfielders. You know, six, let's say, hybrids, people that can play as six, people that can play as an eight, people that can cover ground, people with technical ability. And, and you know what's interesting is Lucas Bergfall, he's just gone to Tottenham. He's going to join them in the summer. He's a very Frankie de Jong esque technical player. But we're in a problem where if something happens to Mena, we've got no one in midfield that's good at retaining ball, that's good in possession, that can break lines as a technical player. And I look at Lucas Bergfall, and we almost signed Lucas Bergfall, but there was Brexit issues when we tried to sign him a few years ago. And I just think he would have been so good, but he's gone to Spurs, which is frustrating the final news story comes in on for to romano on greenwood which is saying that he can tell you the feeling eternally is that united will cash in on greenwood and i think as i said that's probably been expected as, as i said i don't think a decision has been made on greenwood i think there's a chance he stays i think there's a chance he leaves but i think from information i'd heard and wanted to make exclusive video it's looking like a 57 percent greenwood leaves a 43 percent he stays ineos will not make a decision on him till the end of the season we do need a right wing we do need a striker who can cover those areas he's a good player but also because he's an academy player, he's pure FFP profit. Ineos say, look, we can cash in on this guy. Pure FFP profit. That gives us the ability to spend elsewhere. A lot of fans could be upset if we bring him back. 
or Ineos could sit there and say, this is a good player, he can help here and here. I think Ineos, because they're new and, and, and they don't want to cause problems, I think they'll likely sell him. And I think also Greenwood, as much as he wants to play for United, it's probably best for him to play abroad because I think he will get a lot of stick playing for United, a lot of uh, abuse in the stadium, that it might just be safer for him to play abroad. And I think he probably will leave. But as I've said, I don't think a decision has been made. Romano says it's suggestions that it's more towards leaving and that they'll cash in on, on Greenwood. And, and I think that's the more likely outcome. But as I said, no decision has been made. Ineos aren't going to actually make a decision on Greenwood till May. Nothing's been made up, so that could change. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please do hit the like button. Please do subscribe. See you next time. Bye.